Hey, Connor. Hey, Aaron. You think we can get out of the box now? Do you think it's that time? It's time for another episode of the Film Box Podcast. Oh, boy. One, two, three, four. If anybody wants to find me, I'll be in the last place you would look. In a place where people used to be. A land that's called reality. You'll find me there. I won't be catching up on Reddit I won't be watching any news I'll let the planet spin without me Cause everything has been without me sometime And everyone will be alright If I'm not live by satellite It's a beautiful day, I'm running away Hey everybody, welcome to a new and improved episode of the Film Box Podcast. I'm your host, Aaron Souza. I'm here joined by my wonderful co-host, Mr. Connor Jameson, and <gasps> new recurring member, Sam Majewski. Say hello, everybody. Hey guys, thanks for having me on. Welcome. Yeah, welcome. And also, thank you to Josh Woodward for our amazing new uh, theme music that you no doubt heard at the beginning of this podcast. We love it. It gives us a, a much better vibe, I think. And uh, yeah, we're excited to be moving forward with not only a new theme, but a new member to the podcast. Mm -hmm. Upgrades, people. Upgrades. Upgrades. That's all we're about here on the on the Film Box podcast. So Sam, tell us a little about, you know, your movie interests. You know, obviously we've been friends for a long time, but, you know, give us a Give the people a little bit of an idea of what you kind of like for movies. Yeah, so um, big uh, big movie guy. I've been watching obviously movies all my life. More <laughs> movies than TV shows, but I have been interested in more TV shows lately. Um, a lot of sci-fi, fantasy, futuristic movies are my main interest. I'm pretty much interested in all types of movies. Yeah. The man has uh, Lord of the Rings tattoos all over, on on his body. I have so. two Lord of the Rings tattoos. Yes. Thank you so, much. <laughs> so, so yeah, yes, so you can kind of see where where things lie there. Um, but yeah, so we're really excited to expand the roster here on the Film Box and uh, moving forward, kind of keep things a little bit interesting, keep you on your toes, so to speak. Exactly. Um, and speaking of uh, of things being new. Uh, we've had some some releases come out, gentlemen, in the past. You know, by the time you're listening to this, there are two big releases that have come out uh, in the TV world. Uh, mm -hmm. We've got She-Hulk, which debuted their first episode on Thursday, and uh, the Game of Thrones House of the Dragon debuted its first episode on Sunday. So, um, by the time you're hearing this, both of those will be out. However, we have only seen uh, She-Hulk. Mm -hmm. So, uh, first impressions, guys. What did you think of the the first episode? Yeah, um, I liked it. I think it was a refreshing episode. Um, the first trailer or two was a little was a little suspicious, but the last trailer when they showed you know breaking the fourth wall, um, more of a uh, comedic aspect to it. Um, I'm looking forward to what it has in store for us. Yeah, it was good. I had um. A little bit of a uh like it had a comedic tone and it was very um i don't know light-hearted i guess is the right word it was fun i would say yeah yeah i mean i i know i've said that i was kind of getting burnt out on all these marvel projects but you know i wanted to give it at least an episode see how i liked the tone and everything mm -hmm. i thought it was pretty funny i i thought the fourth wall breaks worked for me Pacing yeah, was kind of all over the place, but I'm not going to nitpick. I mean, it's, it's a Marvel show. They they are what yeah. they are, and if you can still have some fun with it, that's what matters. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, we've also got some news today to talk about, as always, and of actually course. a fair amount of, of comic book news coming out in the, in the last week, um, including an update on our... <laughs> <laughs> Our good friend. No, nah, don't Our, even uh... don't even joke about it. <laughs> oh, our 
friends at Warner Brothers, and specifically uh, Ezra Miller of, of The Flash. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so we talked about last week <laughs> that Warner Brothers had said that they're going to go with one of three options. If you hadn't heard, basically Ezra Miller is a piece of shit, and uh, he's starring in the new Flash movie. Um, but they were going to, you know, they have one of three options, which was basically, you know, have Ezra Miller do yeah, issue a public apology and do no press um, or limited press. Mm-hmm. Have him be completely unassociated with the movie, but still release it or cancel the whole thing altogether. And my opinion was that they should just cancel it because yikes. Um, mm-hmm. And see, my but... opinion, my opinion was they should just cut cut the ties don't let him speak don't just move on take the l and just try to recoup any money but but guys guess what <laughs> they did the worst option <laughs> they <laughs> yep oh so this week ezra miller issued a public apology and said he's they are getting um treated for mental health you know issues whatever and said sorry to whoever they've affected, but like, no, like, no, like that. That's just not okay. Yeah, I, I mean, thank you for the apology, but it's not like you just wiped your hands clean of everything. Yeah, I likened it last week to Kevin Spacey, yeah. and like if he had just been like, if 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 House of Cards would, and Netflix had just been like, all right, well, if you just say sorry, it's okay. Mm-hmm. And uh, that sounds laughable to me. And then <laughs> Warner Bros. was like, yep, that's what we're doing. Like, oh, boy. <laughs> they said, oh, guys, wouldn't that be funny if uh, <laughs> if we just trotted them out there just to say sorry again? We wouldn't do that. I mean, um, no, unless. Unless. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, fun stuff, though. Um, of course. Always fun. <laughs> Uh, but in better news, I guess, um, The Rock uh, has released kind of like a statement or talked about it on an interview, I believe, um, basically saying that he wanted to keep Black Adam out of Shazam, which I thought was pretty cool. Yeah, so I guess what had happened is they got the – because the original Shazam came out in 2019, mm-hmm. but like this date goes all the way back to like 2014 – through like casting development and all this stuff and the original plot was going to have black adam and shazam going at it because i guess in the comics they've always been a uh like a hero anti-hero combo just because of the cho shazam thing i did do a little research not enough but a little bit (laughs) um and i guess uh the rock said um it was a good movie script when it first came out, but he felt it would have been a disservice to Black Adam, the character, which I'm honestly okay with. I know it would have been cool for them to both be together, but I guess if they were going to make a Black Adam movie, it's probably better not to have introduced him before and have him get defeated. But I don't know. Yeah. I, I think it was. I don't. I don't really think it was like The Rock speaking out of like self-preservation. I I do think he had good intentions because th- this uh, Shazam movie was pretty good. How it came out. Sam, th- did you see the Shazam movie? Actually, I actually have not seen. I haven't either. <laughs> so you're I, the yeah. only. You're the only that's, one speaking that's, on that's this. That's one one. That's one on my list, so. Mm. (laughs) I thought it was a good movie. It was nice. Had a lot of good themes of, like, family and whatnot. And I feel like Black Adam is a much darker character, and I don't know if how well that would have played in. Is that racist, what you just said? Whoa. (laughs) No, but I feel like if they were going (laughs) to... Yeah, I feel like if they're gonna introduce yeah, Black Adam into Shazam, it would have been like in a post credit scene, like you know, Marvel mm-hmm. for you know phases one. <laughs> like Marvel, every, I was gonna say everything. every single movie that they or TV show that they do. Um, 
but just like how they did it for uh, for Adam Warlock at the end of Guardians, and then he's still not a character. Yeah, he's exactly. about to be. <laughs> it's been like six years. <laughs> Eventually, he will be. But yeah, I, I he didn't want to be in Shazam. I think that was a good decision for everyone involved. Mm. Um, yeah, so, and then the last sort of little piece of news that we wanted to talk about um, is regards Hulu. Uh, and Hulu, specifically in the horror space, has been doing quite a bit. Uh, they have a new Alien movie and a new Hell- Hellraiser movie coming out. Um, and this is just after they released the uh, the Prey movie, which mm-hmm. was, according to you, Connor, was really good. Very good. It... it um... Yeah, so this, the Hellraiser and Alien news isn't new, per se, mm-hmm. but just in light of how well Prey was and how well it's being received, I thought it was worth bringing up that two other horror classics ha- are getting uh, remade, or not remade, but getting a new installment added on Hulu. And yeah. I, was, I also find it pretty interesting that with both of these movies... The original director, um, Clive Barker for Hellraiser and Ridley Scott for Alien, are coming back to produce these movies. Oh, that's pretty nice. Which is always good continuity to have, you know, like the fathers of these projects just continue to advance their uh, progression. Mm-hmm. Uh, which, you know, I'm excited for it. I like these both these franchises and I'm really excited to see what they come out with. Yeah. It would be interesting too, because like if, if, if these movies perform well, I'd be interested to see where, um, where Hulu takes the horror genre next, because like, you know, if you can actually solidify good remakes of classic horror movies, then maybe that'll give you a little bit more to be able to, uh, reinvent some, uh, some, or, or invent some new ones, you know, or go back and, and take on some other classics like Child's Play or Halloween or even Friday the 13th. Now that that's a potential to, to be coming out uh, now that the lawsuit's over. Like there's a lot of potential here and I hope that Hulu nails it because there hasn't been a major studio that's really been able to take on the horror genre. And if mm-hmm. Hulu can do it, then, you know, th- th- I think that'll be good for everything. Yeah, they brought in some good directors to home each of these projects. So I think they're really, really getting off on the right foot. Or even with the having the same producers, they're on their way to... I, I'm i going to say it now. I think both of these movies are going to be good. Staking 100%. it. I hope so. I don't know <laughs> if I'll watch them, but I hope that they're good. I will, and I'll let you know. <laughs> Sam, do you like horror uh, movies? Um... Yes and no, I guess that's the answer to that question. Um, I'm not a big <laughs> fan of pop scary, but like pop up scary mm-hmm. horror, you know, insidious conjuring yeah, and like stuff like scares. that, jump scares. Yeah. Um, but I yeah. do enjoy my 80s horror, you know, Friday the 13th. It's a man of taste, uh, a man of culture. Nightmare, right there, um, Nightmare yes. on Elm Street, stuff like that, you know. Um, that's what I like to hear. Uh, Silence of the Lambs, mm. yeah. Oh yeah, so that's, that's a man of culture right there. Um, all right, so you guys ready to uh, to pay the tab? Because I got I got a good one for you this week. Let's go. <laughs> I don't know so if it was top know, last week, but oh well. Oh, well. Uh, so if you don't know, uh, pay the tab is a segment that I do just about every week or so, um, where I go over uh, what's going on in big brand food and partnerships, um, and. I'm just going to read this this headline here. Uh, Goldfish and Duncan are giving pumpkin spice lovers a flavor to fall for with new limited edition Goldfish Duncan pumpkin spice grams. Excuse me while I get a a, a, a barf bag. <laughs> <laughs> Two uh, things I did not and would not ever put together. <laughs> Goldfish is partnering for the first time with Duncan. I hope so. If this was a recurring partnership, I'd be worried. Uh, to bring fans a new flavor to fall 
for to sorry a new flavor to fall for with i thought that was going to be a pun on fall but apparently not um with You're limited edition much. goldfish duncan pumpkin spice grams the limited time flavor will be available starting september 1st wherever goldfish are sold for 339 per 6.6 ounce bag suggested retail price plus <laughs> plus there's a plus here uh, beginning on August 18th, which is yesterday as of recording this, at 12 p.m. Eastern Time, Goldfish and Duncan are giving fans an early access opportunity to purchase these grams by releasing a limited quantity exclusive th- exclusively through Goldfish Smiles on TikTok before the seasonal product starts. So not only... Sam, you got extra room in that barf bag? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so not only is Goldfish and Duncan partnering... But they're using TikTok to promo this thing, and I I love it. I am here for this. I'm not. <laughs> I know that so, that's like a pure alley, but oh my god, I'm good. I'm gonna send the uh, a picture of what what their promo looks like in the chat, so you guys can see it. So they have um, cinnamon, pumpkin, donuts, and goldfish. Yep, and cheese. Yep. <laughs> Um, lovely with no, notes of pumpkin donut glaze and warm spices including cinnamon cloves and nutmeg uh, these grams give fans another exciting way to celebrate a season pumpkin spice that pumpkin spice enthusiasts are looking forward to all year what I, I also want to point out here this says these limited edition grams are the latest in an exciting line of goldfish limited time product offerings that has included Frank's red hot crackers Old Bay seasoned crackers and jalapeno popper. <laughs> First off, you can't see my I just face. Love how this, it's just disgusted. <laughs> I just love how this this press release. The sentence just ends and jalapeno popper. Like, ha, like jalapeno popper, popper. What? Apparently, apparently we'll never know. Also, I've never heard of any of these things. I have not seen them. I have not heard of them. I mean, I'm no, like, I'm no goldfish connoisseur, but I think the the latest thing I ever heard them doing was like the pizza flavored ones, mm-hmm. and that was like I feel like ten years ago. Good God! This is why another reason why. Sorry for all those goldfish lovers out there, but Cheez Its are better than goldfish. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, man speaks facts. No, you know what? Oh. I'm gonna try it though. You know, I'm gonna try it. Well, you are bold because I will not be going. <laughs> I am going to go out of my way to avoid these. It's pumpkin spice season, though, everybody. Pumpkin spice season is upon us. Officially, fully, fully delved into pumpkin spice seating season. <laughs> Jesus, <Jeez, sighs> can't wait. Oh man, I can't wait to see what else people come up with because this is just yeah. ridiculous. Well. All right, um. So we've we've thought long and hard about talking about our movie sort of uh, interests, mm-hmm. and there we've realized the three of us have actually realized that there are movies that we haven't seen that we would be castrated for for not seeing. Um, and so instead of keeping that to ourselves, we decided to share all of these things with the people, so you guys can castrate us. Yes, so absolutely. So we can get roasted on, on Twitter uh, at the Filmbox Pod on Twitter um, for having for, horrible uh, these... tastes. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we're gonna go over some some movies that we are embarrassed we haven't seen. Uh, I think we each have four, like a top three and an honorable mention, because mm-hmm. uh, you know I I can't play by the rules, so I, I always have to have more. <laughs> more yeah um all right uh so who wants to kick us off uh, sam would all you right. like to i will kick it off with my honorable mention so i have four one my starting with my honorable mention um goes by the name of logan starring hugh jackman ah. as the wolverine Interesting. I actually have not yeah. seen that movie. I have the DVD sitting in a box to my left right <laughs> now, um, right. but I have not seen it yet. <laughs> All right, that's worse. 
I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll tell you what. Uh, <laughs> I uh, I also have not seen Logan. Don't have the box, but this isn't in my top five. Something kind of related to that. I bought the movie Seven to watch it, mm-hmm. and I was like, "Oh, I'm gonna 100 uh, percent gonna watch it." That was three years ago. It's on my my DVD stand. I have not touched it since I bought it. You know what's really funny now that you bring it up? The reason <laughs> I thought about making this segment or this topic was because I saw Seven for the first time oh, really? last week, and I was like, "Huh? How have I made it this far without watching this movie?" What what else have I nice seen? And then I'll pop my list. Yeah. All right. So uh, I guess I'll roll with my own. I, 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 I got to give my uh, own oh, mention. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> okay. You go ahead. Go give your own. All right. All right. So I haven't seen, this is my honorable mention, Parasite. Okay. I also and have I, okay. I have told so many people. <laughs> That I've seen this movie and I thought it was really good. Oh, <laughs> I say, don't okay. I don't know lie. if that's worse than mine. You know, actually I having thought, the movie. <laughs> I you were gonna say it. I've told so many people that it's amazing and to go see it. Well, <laughs> I have said I'm that, but they're all like, "Oh, have you seen it?" I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, I've yeah, seen it." I've seen it. <laughs> Knowing I was lying. <laughs> oh man, just oh, that's hilarious. Just. <laughs> Like, hey guys, uh, you, you see hear this, about this great thing? You see, this this movie's winning a bunch of Oscars. I saw it. I saw it. Can attest. <laughs> Can attest. <laughs> I'd give it one too. Jesus Christ. All right, Sam, what's your number three? I still have to give my own honorable, honorable mention. Oh, sorry. Now I'm steamrolling you. <laughs> yeah. See, Seven was not my honorable mention. Oh. Um, my honorable mention, the mo- one movie that I have not seen that I, you guys are probably going to hate me for, I have not seen The Matrix. I honestly haven't seen it either. Oh, my God. <laughs> I've only seen the first one. I have not seen like the second or third. I, or I haven't even seen the first one. I think I've seen bits and pieces of it, but I never just sat down and watched it. I know about the red blue and the boot of uh, the red pill and the blue pill, and I know about the scene where he's dodging all the bullets, and that's about it. The Smiths, Mister Smith, I mean. Hmm. All right, uh, Sam. What's your number three? All right, so my number three, um, Connor. You're probably gonna hate me, and we were actually just talking about this, but I have not seen The Shining. Oh boy! <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, I know you know some famous scenes. Here's Johnny's scene. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, come play with us, Danny. Um, but um, so I actually I, have. I also, <laughs> I have a confession to make. Uh, I have not seen it either. I've seen the kill count from Dead Meat on The Shining, and that's about as far as I've gotten. Well, shout out them, but I hate you guys. <laughs> <laughs> It's a staple of the horror genre. I know. You're just slapping know, know. me in the face. <laughs> I just, we. I mean, I don't know about Sam, but I just started getting into horror. Like, within the past year. I mean, I'm not even, I'm not even disappointed <laughs> in you, Aaron. I'm more just, just, really, Sam. <laughs> you can hear the heartbreak in my voice. Oh, no. Well, I know oh, you're going to hate me for my number one, but we'll get there eventually. All right. So what's your number number three, Mr. Connor? Um, I So this is a two-parter, but I haven't seen Inception or Interstellar. Okay. I like Christopher Nolan films, but I've only seen the Batmans. So I don't even know if I like any of his other ones. I, I'm disappointed that you haven't seen Interstellar because I love that movie. I know you mentioned it a bunch, and I just have not gotten around to seeing it. Oh, it's a slow burn movie to for, to start, but it's it's good. Mm-hmm. Uh, so so my number three is uh, another staple of the horror genre. So Jesus. I know Connor, you're gonna hate me. <laughs> um, I've never seen Alien. Silence. Just silence. <laughs> Just silence. Yeah, I, I, uh, <laughs> I wish I had my the camera up. You would just see the heartbreak in my face. <laughs> you think you know a person? I know. I've not seen seen uh, seen Alien. It is. Uh, 
it is quite a shame. I I haven't even it's so bad. I haven't even watched the kill count on it. Like sometimes like I, to catch up on horror, I'll watch like kill count or whatever, you know. Mm-hmm. I haven't even done that. I I know like I know that Ellen Ripley is a character and that's about it. <laughs> Oh, I, I think also the, the alien bursting out of the chest. I think everyone knows that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, the only... Um, I also have not seen Alien. Um, <laughs> however... Let's go! The only the closest thing I got to Alien was the uh, the great movie ride in Disney, um, where they go... <laughs> they send you, you know, that little area. Um, and then the alien ripping through the chest um, during Spaceballs, you know, that, that little cam- that little uh, callback. A little cameo. A little callback in that, in the diner at the oh end of the movie. Oh my god. Just oh, silence man. from Connor. Just, I feel just like silence. we're breaking Connor. <laughs> I, I feel say. like we're breaking Connor. I'll break you both. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Sam, what's your number two? My number two is actually Interstellar. I also have not seen Interstellar. <laughs> How have you <laughs> people not seen Interstellar? <laughs> what? How? I heard, you know, movie's great. Soundtrack is great. But. Oh, my God. The music in that movie is just Oh, chef, chef. What if I told you that I've listened to the soundtrack? And oh my still god! Not Don't even the go there. Jesus Christ! You have not done that. Yeah, I, I said it the other day. But now, when I work out, I listen to movie scores, and that one just happened to come up. That is a move. To Listening to movie scores while working out. I also do that. That is a good call. <laughs> it it really gets Christ. you. Amped. I listen to podcasts when I work out. All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> just, okay, I guess I'll just be shunned for that. All right. Um, the Connor, number two. So here's one of my franchises. I've n- oh, I've not seen any of the Godfathers. Excuse me? None of the Godfathers. How? I've just never wanted How? to. <laughs> How? It's the, it's the greatest movie of all time. I mean, you can skip number three. Okay. All right. You know what? All right. I shouldn't be talking. I haven't seen the second Godfather. So hmm. I'll put that hmm. out there. Um, Glass but the houses. first one is amazing. I'm I'm just not big into like crime mob mafia movies. Mm. I don't know why. Just they don't do it for me. Hmm. Yeah, so huh. that's my number two. Interesting. Um, my number two is uh, Jurassic Park. Stop it! No, I've never stop. seen Jurassic Park. I, I, honest to God, I don't. I hardly even know what that movie's about. Even the Jurassic World movies? Have you seen? I have not seen anything related to Jurassic Park. Do you just not know what fun is? <laughs> <laughs> have you never been happy before? <laughs> I I just never seen it like I, I I I don't know I just never was never like oh let's watch a dinosaur movie Jurassic Park like, why would you not want to watch a dinosaur movie <laughs> Jesus Christ Good oh Lord. boy well time for the number ones oh okay. all right who's gonna who's gonna get the most hurt out of this oh, I don't know I feel like it might be you Sam so. I'm going to have you guys guess what this movie is. Oh, Jesus Christ. So, this movie is an older movie. Um, starring Samuel L. Jackson, Uma Thurman. Oh, you haven't seen Pulp Fiction? I have not. Have not seen I have Pulp not Fiction? seen Pulp Fiction. Oh, That is my number my one. Lord. You know, I can't. I haven't seen it in its entirety. I was. It's gonna put it on my it's list it's a too. tough movie it's a tough movie to watch because it, it it's really good but it's like slow at least in my opinion it, it mm-hmm. tends to be a little all over the place but i mean i mean come on that's a staple cinema staple i just said. i say as i have not seen jurassic park <laughs> or alien <laughs> um all right connor number one i have not seen any of the Lord of the Rings movies. I can't believe it. I had a feeling that's what it. that was going to... I knew <laughs> you know? it. I knew it, and I'm pissed. I, I can't believe this. I just... This is, like, the only... Every time I see people be like, oh, like, here's a 10 out of 10 trilogy. It's only Lord of the Rings. And I'm like, cool. 
not gonna watch it why it's so good you know how long it took me to watch star wars for the first time oh great well now i'm gonna have to like ride you down on on lord of the rings you're not going to dude it's i mean there's a reason why people say it's a 10 out of 10 trilogy i mean it's just amazing at least i don't lie about it about watching it (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> like you do parasite <laughs> yes yeah, like oh this is this is my 10 out of 10 trilogy mm. just lord of the rings love them well um well my uh i guess my, my number one's a little bit underwhelming then i think i should have put jurassic park as my number one but uh i have never seen inception really um uh, and i know connor you said you you have not seen it either but like I have been told for years that it's an amazing movie that I need to watch it, and I just have not seen it. Like something about that movie just does not pull me. I'm like, nah, you know what, nah. Interesting. Am I the like, only I, one that's I, seen in, uh, Inception here? Oh, okay. Apparently. apparently, see, I would have thought you've seen it, Aaron. I mean, yeah, well, I I've seen Interstellar. I've seen all the Batman movies. I, I just have not seen. Uh, in uh, Inception, I am a fan of Christopher Nolan, so huh. maybe one day, maybe one day, maybe one day for all of us on these movies. Uh, not Jurassic Park. I I will go to your movie. house and make you watch it. Just once. Says the man who hasn't seen Godfather or <laughs> Lord of the Rings. Yeah, but I know that <laughs> I have stronger willpower. <laughs> Maybe one day. Maybe one day. Speaking of Christopher Nolan, I do have to say that the upcoming movie next year, I think, is going to be one of his best. Oppenheimer. Oh, absolutely. Is this, yeah. Oppenheimer. Is this, uh, Oppenheimer. Oppenheimer. Yeah. yeah that's, that's, I mean, just the cast alone is just going to make that movie. I yeah. I am. Once I saw that poster, all mm-hmm. in. And then did that teaser trailer too. Oh yeah. Speaking oh, of teaser boy. trailers, did, did we talk about the uh, the Joker two teaser trailer at all? Oh no, I haven't seen it. Um, I haven't seen it either. Oh, well, stay tuned for um <laughs> we'll talk- for bonus content where we we react to, to trailers for the first time. Hmm. Um. Hey, you guys want to play uh play a little game? Oh, it depends. I don't know. Um. I don't know if I can look you so, in the eye anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to do a game. Uh, basically, we did it on our very first test episode and have not come back to it since. Until today, we're going to do a random film plot generator. Ooh, I'm excited. <laughs> so I've got, if you don't know how this is going to work, I've got a generator that's going to give us some random film plot. Um and a couple characters, and then Connor's going to give us some actors, and we have to run our way through trying to come up with a story. Yeah. Um, based on this plot and these characters and how things are going to go. Uh, so, yeah. So, without further ado, um, do we have any specific genre that we want to look at? Well, I can choose drama, fantasy, mystery, romance, or sci-fi. I don't need any romance movie. Oh, okay. <laughs> a romance movie. All right. Um, and I'll hit the generate button a few times just so we can make sure it's truly random. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, oh, boy. Um, <clears throat> so this says, It's a contemporary romance story about the validity of first impressions. It kicks off near the beach with an awkward silence that was just brought on by car karaoke. Our protagonist is a cowboy who can be uptight. And a secondary character is a princess who favors the head over heart. Okay. Now let's get us some uh, some actors to play in this movie. Okay. I'm trying to hold back some laughs because I, I rolled it out while you were <laughs> oh, talking. No. You want to oh, know who no. our cowboy is? Who's our cowboy? Larry David. <laughs> <laughs> Curb your enthusiasm thing. <laughs> oh no. But you know what's even worse? <laughs> Wanna know oh, who his no. princess is gonna be? Who's his princess? Taylor Swift. Oh, nice. 
Nice. So this is truly a modern day romance. It's contemporary. It's contemporary. Um, cool. So let's get a couple other characters, like one or two other actors, to to integrate into the story at some point. All right. We've got Sylvester Stallone. Okay. And Julia Roberts. All right. Perfect. Oh, boy. So, um, it kicks off near the beach with an awkward silence that was just brought on by car karaoke. I can't... I, all right. You know what? I kind of... Like, I almost want this to be like a... Like an almost like realistic kind of movie. Okay. Like, where... <laughs> Where Larry David actually plays Larry David, but as a cowboy. <laughs> okay. You know what I'm saying? And so, <laughs> I don't know why, but the first thing that came to my head when I heard, when I saw the car karaoke was um, was that <laughs> that stupid segment on, on the uh, whatever late show it is. Oh, with, uh, uh, James Gordon, Gordon. Yeah. Carpool karaoke. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> so something happened during carpool karaoke. Okay. Oh God. Um. So, Larry David, how do we want to? How do we want to rock this? So obviously, he and Stallone have to be friends. Yeah. I feel like Stallone should be like a bartender type character. Or like, His like if it's gonna be near the beach, like a muscle hunk at, at, in L.A. or whatever. <laughs> at at his current guys. age, he is a muscle oh, hunk we... still. Okay, fair, fair point. No, no, no. I'm riding with it. No, yeah. Um, I am all, right, so... all for 76 year old Stallone being the hunk on the beach, <laughs> muscle hunking it up. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Julia Roberts is in it. And Taylor Swift is in it. Yes. All right. Um, so this also says, note that someone in the story is still haunted by a past mistake. So let's kind of bring it to what is our main conflict here? So the validity of first impressions. So would this be like Larry David and Taylor Swift are being hosted on James Corden? Well, see, how how I picture this and Sam, I want to get your input on it too. Um, you know that I don't know if it's still on, but you know it's like um, taxi trivia or whatever it was. Oh, uh, cash cab, cash cab. cash cab. Yeah, I think we can do something like this, where Larry David, he is the driver of this karaoke car. And he just happens to be driving down the street. Taylor Swift, who is a princess, uh, is standing there. She hops oh. in. Okay. I like this. I like this a lot. So, like, how about how about Taylor Swift is like a foreign princess? Yes. Kind of like a uh, coming to America type, type deal? Yes. Um, you can have Larry David yeah. as, the, uh, as, as the Uber driver. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Yes, he's a, so he's a he's a <laughs> God. How can we make Larry David uptight? Make him Larry David. <laughs> okay, I mean fair, but <laughs> what about this cowboy character? Like, is he like one of those guys that hates the world? He hates you. But then why is he cash cabin? Oh, he hates youth. Yes. Oh, oh I like yeah, that. That's a good one. He's the youth so, in their crypto. Damn kids and their smartphones. <laughs> I'm still not into so, Bitcoin. <laughs> <laughs> I could have had Bitcoin when it was three cents. Didn't want it. All right, so, so Larry David is an uptight cowboy who drives Uber slash cash cab. So, oh, car- karaoke cab. <laughs> um, and then Taylor Swift is a princess who does not know about anything about america or american traditions so so what was that what was that note that uh someone in the story is still haunted by a past mistake oh no 
Are you going to make it that Larry David regrets not having b- bought Bitcoin and that's no. why he's uptight? <laughs> no, because I, I stand with him on that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what I'm thinking is, and this is how we work Julia Robertson. Okay. What if Julia Roberts is like the queen? Oh, oh. And were they she, like lovers at one point? Her and Taylor Swift? No. No, no. <laughs> Larry David. Her and Larry David, you animal. <laughs> No. How how I'm picturing this in my head. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Is So we're going rom-com area now. Um yep. So we her mother rom-com. Her mother is like trying to arrange a marriage. She says no, so she flees whatever country she is coming from to America. Oh my god. I love it. I want... All right. <laughs> I'm thinking about this past mistake thing. Mm-hmm. So what if... Um, what if this rom- rom-com is not like a romance between Larry David and Taylor Swift, but it's like a, a father-daughter type story? Mm-hmm. That Where... That's how I was kind of feeling it. We could take it like yeah. even just like a a buddy buddy type thing, right? Right. So so this is this is what's brewing in my mind. All right. So Larry David, before he was karaoke cab man, mm-hmm. um, he and the Queen Julia Roberts were intertwined, and then he had an affair, which is the thing that's haunted by his past or that haunts him. <laughs> And his affair is with his gay best friend, Sylvester Stallone, the muscle hunk. <laughs> I'm gonna let you stew on that one. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I, I I think Hollywood should get me a contract right now. No, they sign should up, not. Sign them up. <laughs> Someone will do it. See, because how. I think, in my head at least, Stallone and Larry David, they have like this, you know, best buds. Um, I don't know, Stallone still works out at like Muscle Beach or whatever. Because mm-hmm. um, in my head, this is taking place in like L.A. Yeah, 100%. Um, so I think... They're like all buddy buddy. I think Larry David and Taylor Swift become buddy buddy. Mm-hmm. Oh. Oh, hold on. Oh. Light bulb. Bad. So light bulb moment. What if Larry David in his past he was like a like a, a deadbeat dad who like left the family? Yes, yes. And this this is, is where I was thinking. Yes, but, but not not with Julia Roberts because she's a queen over right. in like England or whatever. Right. So that's like him leaving his family. Obviously, in my head, we have a wife and a daughter. You know, got to make some parallels. So the point is for Larry David to learn to be a father. Yes, yes. This is what popped right when your light bulb went off. This is what happened in my mind, too. It's like he he his thing that he regrets is that's haunting haunting him from his past is that he was a deadbeat dad or like he gave up on a family died or something like that you know he gave up on the family mm-hmm. but now he has a chance to be a mother a, <laughs> a mother a maternal <laughs> figure <laughs> he has the chance to be a Larry David figure uh, to Taylor Swift mm-hmm. as she has abandoned her her royal claim to live in. LA. Yes. So, where do we incorporate Sylvester Stallone other than being Mr. Muscle Hunk? So, I think what we could do is when Larry David ran away from his family. Mhm. Stallone, so let's just say he's on the other side of the country with that old family. He li- flees all the way to LA. Mhm. And the first person to accept him and give him a place to stay is Stallone. Okay, I like that. 
I like that. They don't have um, to be lovers. Sam, what do you eyes. got? Sam, what do you got? Uh, that's. I, I don't think I can do any better than that. <laughs> <sighs> wow. Did we really just come up with a solid, actual, legitimate story here? I'm sure this has been done before, but. I don't know if it has, really. I think we might be on to one right now, guys. I think we might be on to one. All right, so to sum up, here's our story as follows. Sylvester Stallone. Sorry. Rewind. Oh, we got to give Larry David. We got to give everyone a name, too. <laughs> okay. Okay, so what is Larry David's name as the cowboy? What, what screams deadbeat dad? Um, uh, <laughs> Why Why did the first thing that come to mind, literally just off random, completely random, was Mark Spector? <laughs> <laughs> like, well, that's already taken someone else. <laughs> um, fuck, what the fuck? The second thing that came to my mind was John Bender. John. His name is John. <laughs> John. John. John Spector Jesus Bender. Christ. I have gone, I have gone... Mark Spector to John Bender, and then I was like, John, what could be a John? And then my mind says, Malkovich. <laughs> like, okay, <laughs> let's turn you off for a minute. Well, my mind went to John Bonham, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, John Kazakhstan. John Kazakhstan. Oh, Lord, this is getting canceled already. <laughs> it's a place. <laughs> You can't name a white guy John Kazakhstan. All right, then his name is John Smith. <laughs> John Smith. Okay, John Smith, and then Taylor Swift's character, Princess Penelope Featherbottom. Sure. That was the thing we did in our last uh, in our, our rated film script. Yeah. Um, Pen- Penelope. Reed of the house Reed. Okay. All right. Um, and then we got uh Sylvester Stallone. Chet. Chet? Chet. <laughs> Chet Hunk Boy. Hunk Boy. <laughs> um Chet Hunk Boy. And then finally the Queen Jennifer Gar Jennifer julia roberts <laughs> sorry um queen bridget bridget reed yeah okay i feel like that should be the princess yeah Br- bridget Penelope sounds more reed should be so- it sounds more princess yeah. than queen okay queen penelope reed how's that i like it okay all right so the story goes as follows our contemporary romance story starts off with Queen, sorry, uh, Princess Bridget Reed being picked up in a car in L.A. by main protagonist uh, John Smith, the cowboy played by Larry David. Oh, I forgot he was a cowboy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, whoops. <laughs> All right, so he's from Montana then. There you go. Um, so they... Uh, they're driving along, doing some karaoke in the car, and when he says something really terrible to her about running away from home or some shit like that, um, and he and, and so they she storms off out of the car after an awkward silence, blah 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 blah, blah. um, and our friend Sylvester Stallone plays uh, Chet, Chet Hunkboy. Was that mm-hmm. was that what I said? Um. Who is um, a a beach hunk? Yes, in L.A., who was the first man to take uh, John Smith in after uh, plot twist number one? He was a deadbeat dad himself. This gets revealed fairly early in the movie. Mm -hmm. Um, and then we cut also to over in England, where Queen Penelope Reed is heartbroken over the fact that her daughter left uh, very suddenly without warning. And only left a note saying that she's starting new in L.A. in America. Mm -hmm. And so I believe, I believe. Okay, so I actually kind of have figured out this whole this whole process of of this movie. So I think that they're going to. Like Larry David and Taylor Swift are going to keep 
like r- bumping into each other until he kind of decides himself to get over his demons and start helping this girl. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, the queen has sent people across into America to bring her back to England. And so they're kind of like trying to evade these people, but also like he's teaching her about family and what how much family is important and stuff like that. End of the movie, they she finally is like I need to be back in England with my family. Mm-hmm. He's like, yeah, you know what, you're right. Uh, and then either I'm either stuck at they part ways in like this very like heartfelt scene at the end, or she invites him to come live with them in England because he's got nothing out here except for Chet, who is already ready to you know Boom. he's I mean he's Ch- how about Chet's like on the way out or something like that? So it makes it so that he can leave without any regrets. I kind of like it the first way. Okay, where they have this heartfelt goodbye. Yeah, I feel like it would be more impactful if that was the end of like their time together. It's like, okay, here's the okay. here are the lessons you've learned from what I've taught I you. I like that. I like that. Oh boy. Oh, I like Because then the lot. ending the ending we can still incorporate like Chet's on his way out. So Larry David uh I forgot John Smith Packs up his karaoke cab, starts his way back to Montana. Oh, after the passing of Chet. Just, Chet didn't have to die, but. Hmm. Chet could, ooh, Chet could die like halfway through, so that's like another emotional. It's like, holy shit, you know, what's going on? I like that. Yeah. Because then it would further drive home, like, why he makes the the switch to being, like, from cold to, shit, I really have, like, no one. But this girl, mm-hmm. like, I keep running into, she clearly, like, needs help. Needs someone, yeah. Holy shit, did we come up with a real movie? I got goosebumps. Damn! All right. Well. Sam, you're a good luck I charm. I know. <laughs> Maybe we should, uh. We should do this more often. Oh, Paging. Boy, oh, uh, who's the guy who wrote like the notebook? Like Nicholas Sparks or whatever? Yeah. Nicholas yeah. Sparks, yeah. Got your next Just one get, right here. Get Let's get John Green. Sure. I don't know who that is. What? What? I don't know who that is. Uh, well, he wrote uh, uh, Fall in Our Stars, right? Yeah. You think I read? Uh, and also was the guy from Crash Course, where if you took oh, any high that school guy, course, yeah, oh, okay, John ne- Green. Never mind. I know his brother Hank, and his Hank, yeah, Hank Green. Yes, the TikTok sensation, Hank Green. Yes. All right. Either way, whoever wants uh, it, come get it. Guaranteed bop. Oh, for sure, we'll make millions. Um, Maybe billions. I think so. Billions at the box office. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I think that's just going to about, uh, do it for this episode of the film box podcast. Um, I just want to say, uh, once again, thank you, Sam, for coming on and, uh, we're really excited to continue doing this, uh, down the road with you and change up the dynamic of this podcast a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, I also want to shout out again, uh, Josh Woodward for our amazing new theme music. I'm really, really excited for, um, for, for that and how our, how the vibe of our podcast is going forward. Um, and then also, uh, I just want to mention, you can follow us on Twitter at the film box pod. Uh, we have a new, uh, merch store that just launched on Redbubble, So that will be linked in the description of the, this episode. Um, and also a new Facebook group that I, uh, that, that we started up, um, where you can go and just, uh, where we basically want to start a community of, of people, um, who enjoy the podcast and want to talk about things, talk about movies, you know, just kind of like a, a fun space for movie fans of all kinds to mm-hmm. to uh, come and enjoy uh, enjoy their time. Uh, so that'll be linked in the in the description here as well. Um, but yeah, you guys want a uh, uh, want a a dad joke? No, but I want to hear it anyway. What if um, I have? No, what if I have I, one too? All right, all right. <laughs> Everyone's just taking the dad jokes here. I wish my kids weren't offended by my frozen jokes. 
I really feel like they just need to let it go. Hey, guys. I don't think we should do this anymore. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm at least going to get mine off. Uh, All right. Why can't a bicycle stand on its own? Why? It's too tired. <laughs> nice. Oh, I love it. I love it. All right. That's going to do it for us. Thank you for listening to the Film Box Podcast. Uh, my name is Aaron Souza. Connor. Sam. We'll see you next time. Bye bye. I'm running away. Don't yeah. bother to Facebook message or call me. Cause I'm living life in airplane mode and everything is okay. I just want to play. Unplug for the day and live in the moment. Cause I'm living life in airplane mode. Yeah.